Good afternoon. Friday afternoon. Uh, wow, it looks like I need a haircut. Maybe I'll get one this weekend. Anyway, today we're going to manage a ventilator on a patient who has a head injury. This will be fun because I have a new tool that we can work on to do that. Uh, first, let's go over the details of the case. From documents found in the patient's wallet, this individual appears to be a 31-year-old Latino male reportedly injured in a construction accident. He was dropped off by fellow co-workers. From what can be ascertained, this individual was working in masonry when an unsecured load of bricks toppled and caused the injury. He was reportedly rendered unconscious for a brief period and awakened confused and disoriented. The confusion only seemed to worsen and the patient suffered from the description what seems to be some type of seizure. He was then brought to the emergency department. Neurological exams suggest that the patient suffered a closed head injury. No other injuries are apparent. The patient arrived unconscious. Further assessment reveals a patient with suspected increasing intracranial pressure. Assisted by respiratory therapy and nursing, the physician promptly sedates, paralyzes, and intubates the patient. RT then puts the patient on the mechanical ventilator. This is where you come in. If you want to participate in this next part, you'll need to sit down at a computer with internet access, go to rtconnection.org, and uh, bring up the vent simulator. Then you can enter the values. Here, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Go to www.rtconnection.org, all one word. If you click on Student button on the left-sided menu, you'll see the page that we're looking at now. Right below the alveoli, it says New, Avia Vent Simulator. That's what you're going to click on. This is going to open a spreadsheet, uh, which is an XLS, or actually a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. And here it is. A tab at the bottom of the spreadsheet allows you to review the instructions very quickly. But simply, you'll just enter your rate, title, volume, peak flow, PEEP, FIO2 in the circles. And then as you do so, you can see the monitored parameters and the blood gas values. Go ahead and do that. Uh, dial in some settings for this patient, and then let's compare what you did. Okay, you're back. I got that haircut I promised. Just like magic. I can't see what you did, but I'll be happy to go through what I did. Let's take a look at mine. Okay, here's the vent simulator. First thing I'm going to do is change the FiO2 to 40%. Next, I'm going to go over to my rate and change that to 12. My title volume to... 600 and uh, that seems to give me an IE ratio of 1 to 7.3 that's too long so I think I'll go over and change my flow down okay there it is on 30 that gives me a 1 to 3.2 that should be okay for now if I look over at my blood gas I see that I'm at 7.40 and 40 so if this was a normal patient I'd have perfect settings but it's not a normal patient this patient has a head injury and although it's controversial, the NVRC expects you to hyperventilate this patient some. Now, years ago, we used to hyperventilate them between a CO2 of 25 and 30, but I think now uh, current thinking may be more like 30 to 35. So I'm going to change my rate to 18, and I've also changed my FiO2 to 30%, uh, and I still have a PO2 of 136. Finally, I've changed my peak flow to 40 uh, in order to straighten out my IA ratio, which was a little less than 1 to 2 on a peak flow of 30. So now I have 1 to 2.7. Okay, now my CO2 is at 30, and the rationale for this 
hyperventilation, ventilating down to uh, a lower CO2, is that lowering CO2 constricts blood-brain vessels. Now this is at the expense of oxygen, but for a patient that has active bleeding in their brain, it can help temporarily lower intracranial pressure. You might notice that I elected not to use PEEP. Why? PEEP helps oxygenation, and obviously with a PO2 of uh, 136 on 30%, this patient has pretty normal oxygenation and doesn't need the assist of PEEP. Plus, PEEP has the side effect of potentially raising intracranial pressure. It does this by raising the pressure in the chest and uh, uh, slowing down blood flow potentially from the brain. Finally, this patient appears to have normal compliance and resistance, so I don't think anything else is going to be necessary. Next step is for us to carry our patient to CT scan, and I'm going to leave him on the ventilator. For now that you've learned how to use the ventilator simulation tool, we can uh, try some other patients. Uh, by changing the formulas, I can make a patient an ARDS patient with bad oxygenation, perhaps a status asthmaticus, and feel free to make a suggestion on what kind of patient you'd like to see. And uh, see you next time. Uh -huh.